Hello Waltham Forest and welcome to the London Borough of Waltham Forest Activity Programme Brackets Holiday. I didn't say that properly. Doesn't matter. You know where you are. You know it's the holidays and you know you're doing activities. You don't know, however, who I am. Hello, my name's Kev. Uh, Kev F. Uh, Kev F. Comic Artist, if you like. I write and draw comics for a living. Um, I've done loads of comics that you won't have heard of. I'm pretty sure you've never heard of Captain Clevedon. That's because I live in a small town called Clevedon. There's Clevedon Pier. Uh, One Direction once filmed a video on there. You have no idea who One Direction are. God, I feel old. Anyway, uh, this is a, a superhero that I made for our local town. You could make your own local superhero if you wanted. Uh, I have also worked extensively for Marvel. Name me a Marvel comic character. Let's see if it's one of the ones I've written and written. No, I haven't done that one. Uh, let's see if it's one of the ones. No, I haven't done Deadpool. No, but it's uh, Spider-Man. Yes, I did work on one issue of Spider-Man. I worked extensively on uh, Doctor Strange. There's me doing the artwork on Doctor Strange. Uh, somewhere my name will be hidden on that. There you go. There's uh, Kev F, my name hidden on there. And uh, an indication of quite how long ago that artwork was. Uh, that's what it looked like when it's printed in Marvel Comics. That is the original artwork uh, with the dotted blue line around the edge. In a little while I'll explain why there's a dotted blue line around the edge of Marvel Comics artwork. Of course you probably already know that because you're the uh, age 8 to 11 group that I'm teaching today. Uh, if by the chance you have any younger siblings you can have a look at the classes I've done with them I'm sure nobody will mind because uh, I've done something slightly different with the uh, six to nine year olds and then something slightly different with the eight to eleven year olds and something slightly different again with the eleven to fourteen year olds and uh, oh I just kicked the laptop and made the whole world shake this is live by the way totally live you can't pause this it's live it's actually happening now look look at the time on your watch Yep, it's exactly the same as the time on mine. We must dash on, we only have half an hour. Uh, I work for Doctor Who magazines and Doctor Who adventures. Do we have any Doctor Who fans here? Not as many Doctor Who fans as I was hoping. Well, you won't be impressed by that then. Uh, you won't be impressed by the stuff I do for adverts. And you're probably not incredibly impressed by the fact that I used to work on Star Trek. Look, there's my Captain Kirk and Mr. Spock. That's the artwork I did uh, when I was working for Marvel. I'm most famous for working on this comic. Uh, anybody read the Beano? Uh, anybody used to read the Beano, then you grew out of the Beano and you discovered it was insulting to the intelligence of eight-year-olds? Well, I work extensively in the Beano. I write scripts for other people to draw, a Banana Man, and I write and draw uh, a lot of stories uh, myself. Pansy Potter, the Strongman's Daughter, you might have seen me doing recently. In the 2009 annual, uh, Roger the Dodger's Reservoir Dodge. That's one of mine. And uh, when you're looking in the Beano, look for my name hidden all over. There's my name, Kev F, hidden in the background. I tend to secrete it in the background so people can have fun spotting it. Can you can you see my uh, name hidden on there? It's written on the on the smell effect going around the edge of the page and it's also written on that iPad down there. Kev F written all over the place and can you see Kev F written on that page there? It is in fact written on a filing cabinet. It's hidden away there on the filing cabinet. It's pathetic isn't it? hiding my name in the background of my artwork so the kids will become fans of my work but it truly does work and um, that's what it looks like in the Beano. That's what the original artwork looked like and that's the way we're going to be working today. Have you got your materials? If you haven't all you need is A4 paper, simple A4 paper. You won't need much of this either. A uh, couple of sheets of A4 paper. You may pause reality and go and get A4 paper and a pencil. If you've got a simple HB pencil Really any drawing equipment will do. HP pencil is what I would recommend and then you can use a rubber and rub things out. If you've got a ruler that's also a very very helpful thing. Uh, straight lines in real life and, and some of you have probably got teachers at school who tell you this in real life there aren't straight lines uh, but in comics there are because we do boxes around the edges and so I'm using a ruler on a fairly regular basis um, but if you, can, you can do things freehand the world is your oyster. I'm going to teach you many things to do but uh, today if I teach you rules remember rules are there to be broken. You can all draw, can't you? There's no one here who thinks they can't draw, is there? No, no, I'm sure you haven't got your hand up now. No, I'm sure you're not shouting at the screen saying, I can't draw, tell me how to draw. Oh, come on, absolutely anybody can draw anything. I mean, I got the kids this morning and they drew a circle and they drew another circle and then they did a letter C and they did a letter L and they did a letter C and a vertical line, a vertical line, a vertical line, a vertical line and a zigzag line and they'd drawn Bart Simpson. I mean, there's nobody who couldn't do that, is there? I get some kids in my classes and they'll, they'll pretend they can't draw a body. I mean, really, could anything be simpler than doing the letters of the alphabet? So they do a letter C and an I and an I and an I and a C and a C and a C and an I, 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 C, C, I, I, you see? So, 
The simplest thing we could do today is start by creating a character. If you want to start in really simple ways with simple block shapes like that, then I'll be impressed by whatever you do. But if you want to challenge yourself to anything more impressive, one thing you could do is don't be afraid of copying from comics. I'll just stick this up on the board so you can see what we've done already. Uh, you could also uh, be using these brilliant examples that I've done here. Uh, who can recognise any of these characters? That is, of course, Asterix the Gaul there. Uh, that is... Thor. Uh, I've only copied these from other... I, I, these aren't characters that I draw, so I've copied Thor from a comic, I've copied Asterix from a comic. That is... Harley Quinn, well done, up here. Lisa Simpson, exactly. Find yourself a Simpsons comic, start copying the characters from them. You'll find that they are actually made of very simple shapes like this. So, anybody can create a character, uh, but if you've got comics to hand, work from those. Don't be afraid of using reference. Has anybody ever been told, don't copy things, just make it all up out of your head? See, that'd be crazy. That'd be like going into an English class and your teacher saying, you see the alphabet? Ignore it. Make your own up. You couldn't, could you? You couldn't write words, sentences and books unless you'd first learnt what all the letters look like. You can't draw anything out of your head until you've put it in your head in the first place. So don't be afraid of finding reference. And to show how nobody should be afraid of finding reference, these are my two latest books. These are my graphic novels, available on Amazon now. Uh, Finlay Macbeth, adapted from the Scottish play by Shakespeare, and Prince of Denmark Street, adapted from what play? You know what Prince of Denmark Street is adapted from, it is. Well, if you don't know, you're going to have to Google it later. It's adapted from another Shakespeare play. And... In so many examples of this, I've actually posed for pictures myself. There you go. There's uh, Hamlet looking up Denmark Street. Denmark Street in London. Uh, it's Tin Pan Alley, where the music business used to be based. So in my version of Hamlet, uh, it's set back in the 1970s. And instead of being kings of countries, they're rock bands and rock stars. And there's still lots of murder and death. And there you go. Somewhere on my phone, you'll find a photograph of me standing there like that. I draw lots of things out of my head. But you can't draw anything out of your head until you've put it in your head in the first place. So, for example, in Finley Macbeth, when I had to do the, um, the famous car chase from the end of Macbeth that I'm sure we all remember. I had to find it set again in the 1970s. So I had to find 1970s Jaguar cars, find photographs of those and then draw from those. Um, that's the only way to make these things look realistic. So when you're creating your characters, don't be afraid of copying. Copying isn't cheating. Copying is learning. If you copy somebody else's drawing and pretend it's your style, pretend it's your drawing, that's different. But when you're learning how to draw, we all magpie ideas from other people. Would you like to see how to draw a muscly superhero like the Incredible Hulk. If you want to draw the Incredible Hulk, all you need to do are Olympic rings. Look, if I just do an Olympic ring there, 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 there you go, the Incredible Hulk. What, doesn't that look like the Incredible Hulk yet? Wait a minute. How about if I do a ring there and a ring there? There you go, Incredible Hulk. No? Okay, wait a minute. How about if I do a ring there and a ring there and a ring there and a ring there? There you go. The Incredible Hulk. So now what I... Really? Doesn't that look like the... Tough crowd. Okay, wait a minute. How about if I do a ring there, a big rainbow behind there. There you go. The Incredible Hulk. So what I'd like you to do now is... Really? Doesn't that look like the Incredible... Okay, I, I know what it is. You can't see it because it's not in pen. So if I take my great big felt tip pen and you see how those circles are all the same size as each other and they all kind of bump into each other. I'm going to take that one there and do a couple of arrows pointing towards the centre. Incredible Hulk? Okay, how about I do a line there and a couple of lines there. Incredible Hulk? Okay, wait a minute. How about I do a, a line there and get a loop there and loop there and go around the edge and put a big dollop of ice cream on the top. Incredible Hulk? Okay, wait a minute. How about if I take those two circles there, same size as his face, take those two circles there and turn those into his great big Incredible Hulk shoulders. And then I can take those two circles there and turn those into his Incredible Hulk upper arms. Then those two circles there turn into his Incredible Hulk chest. Bing! And then I can take those two circles there, put elbows on them, and we can turn those into his Incredible Hulk forearms. Then those two circles there can have thumbs and fingers, and we'll turn those into his Incredible Hulk fists with his six-pack and the sides of his body. Now, does that look like the Incredible Hulk? Then I can take that rainbow behind there and turn that into his big, ripped Incredible Hulk trousers with his Incredible Hulk legs, his Incredible Hulk feet, and his big... Incredible Hulk tootsies on the end. 
Now, does that look like The Incredible Hulk? Okay, admittedly, it does look a bit like The Incredible Hulk sat on the toilet, I realise that, but the important thing is, that's how easy it can be. If you're not afraid of scribbling, not afraid of using your pencil lightly and working out to the shape that things should be underneath, then you can rub things out, you can move things around, go back in with more detail, and you can turn any rough scribble into an acceptable looking drawing. If you want your figure drawing to be a little bit more convincing, here's a top tip for you. Never leave home without a naked man in your bag. I take this with me into schools all the time. When I was a kid, um, you'd find a lot of my comic strip figures looked like Action Man because I'd use Action Man to model for. Before I was able to take photographs on my phone, I would put him into the awkward positions and then draw from him. Very, very useful drawing tool. You can see what a face looks like sideways on. You can see what it looks like when a foot comes hurtling towards you. Again, such a useful drawing tool. Together, we're going to create a comic. We're going to create a comic like these. These are the comics I've done, I've done with other classes and groups and schools all over the country, all over the world. This group called their comic, The Day Boris Johnson Finally Delivers Brexit. Uh, this group called their comic, Big Fat Dramatic Llama. And in fact, what I did is I took that front cover and then... I've coloured it and that's what we're going to do today. We're going to come up with a title for a group comic and then I will do the artwork for it and we'll get it uh, available to be sent back to you. Let's see if we can think of a name for a group comic. Who can think of a better title than I got locked in my nan's closet? Who can think of a better title than Gobble Gobble Turkey? Who can think of a better title than I Cannot Find My Pants? See, as soon as we've come up with a title for the group comic, I'll start drawing that and then I'm going to show you how easy it is to take your characters and put them into a comic strip and we're going to produce a comic strip just like these kids did here. And by the way, this is going to be the front cover of the comic. I've uh, laid out the border and my little logo at the top. That's you, aged 8 to 11. Uh, for the 8 to 11s, there you go, that's going to be our front cover. And, um, right, to begin with, give me a name. Give me a name. It could be, it could be a really stupid name, like a, a, a big bloke, uh, an angry marshmallow. Um, so shout, shout them out to the screen. Shout out some sort of, uh, not Donald Trump. We had Donald Trump suggested this morning. Don't suggest that. Um, give me a name. A hairy gorilla. Okay, a hairy gorilla. Give me another one. Give me another name or thing or person or a fat banana. Is that even possible, a fat banana? Okay, hairy gorilla versus fat banana. We're going to do this with a show of hands. I want you to stick your hand in the air if you'd prefer our title to begin with a hairy gorilla or to begin with a fat banana. Hands in the air, who prefers hairy gorilla? Hands in the air, who prefers fat banana? Fat banana appears to have won. Right, now I'd like a verb. A doing word, like uh, running, jumping, standing still, throwing, th throws up. Okay, throwing up, throwing up. Okay, throwing up, can somebody give me another one? Painting. Okay, painting or throwing up. Which would we prefer, painting or th on the title of our group comic? Hands in the air, who'd prefer painting? Hands in the air who prefer throwing up. That wasn't really a difficult one, was it? Okay, so a fat banana threw up over. Right, what could a fat banana throw up over? Shout again at the screen. Give me a suggestion for what a fat banana could shout. Okay, uh, the back garden. That's nice. We've got the back garden and Walthamstow Central. Okay, Walthamstow Central or the back garden. Hands in the air for the back garden. Has there for Waltham so Waltham Stowe Central. The title of our group comic is going to be A Fat Banana Threw Up Over Waltham So Tho I can't say Waltham Stowe Central, but I can draw it. So while you start drawing your characters, I'm going to begin laying out the title of our group comic here. What you can see is I'm doing I'm ruling a line at the top and bottom of the words. Banana. Okay, so there is a fat banana threw up on Waltham So. Waltham So. Oh, give in, I give in. Why couldn't you have just gone with the back garden? There's going to be there lots of vomit on Waltham So. On the station. I'll finish that off in a short while, but before we can do that, I'm going to show you how easy it is to take our characters and put them into a comic strip. So if you can put your drawings down for a moment, please, I'm going to show you how easy it is to take any character and put it into a comic strip story. All you need to know are some very, very simple techniques. Step one. 
when you get your brand new piece of paper, the first thing to do is to put a border around all four sides. On your piece of paper, if you left a border about a centimetre away from the edge of the page, the reason we do this for professional printed artwork is because it's called the grip edge. You see, when they give you artwork paper from Marvel Comics, it's printed with a blue line on the outside. That's the grip edge. You're not allowed to draw outside of that line. And then a dotted line inside, which is the trim edge. So that when the page is printed, they then guillotine or trim along the printed page so that the drawing goes off the edge of the printed page. But it was always drawn inside a border on the artwork page, the grip edge. I'm just going to do a story about a famous person walking along the street. Who could it be? Uh, give me a shout out. Shout out the name of a famous person we could have walking along the street. Yes, not Donald Trump. We always have Donald Trump. Uh, so shout out the name of who's the most famous person you can think of off the telly. Not Simon Cowell. People always say Simon Cowell. Apart from Donald Trump and Simon Cowell, can you think of a famous person who we could have? Who? Kim Kardashian. Right, thank you. So in picture number one, of my simple demonstration story, Kim Kardashian is walking along the street. And in picture number two, Kim Kardashian is so busy thinking about how much she's looking forward to being the first lady of the new president of the USA when Kanye West gets elected that she doesn't notice a worm wriggling along the footpath in front of her. And so in picture number three, totally by accident, Kim Kardashian treads on the worm. Now, that's all that's going to happen in my story. It's not going to be a giant worm. It's not going to be a magic worm. It's just going to be Kim Kardashian walking along going, look at me in my leather trousers, off to on the worm. It's a simple story. You might even say it's a rubbish story, but I can make it look better than that. That is the worst looking comic strip anyone in this class will do today. What do I need to put in those drawings to make it look more like Kim Kardashian walking along the street? What do I need? Her bum, no. No, her bum is not the most important. She's not defined by her bum. Don't just say her bum. Her hair, hair's not a bad idea. OK, we've got Kim Kardashian's hair. Loads of big old hair going up there. There's her hair there. We've got her hair up there. And what's the most important thing that's missing? A body. Exactly. What have I done wrong? I've done a stick figure. Stick figures are evil. Stick figures for, are for babies. Nobody in this room has done a stick figure. Everybody has done far better than stick figure drawings because when you start creating your characters no one's going to do stick figures when you're doing a drawing filling the page so if you can avoid stick figures when you're designing your characters you can definitely avoid stick figures when it comes to doing your comic strip pages there we have a nice realistic body on Kim Kardashian and she's floating in the middle of nowhere so what do I need behind her a background exactly so here we have I could do a simple horizon like that. She could be walking along a beach, she could be walking on a desert. In my case, Kim Kardashian is walking along a footpath in the middle of the city. There's the skyscrapers there behind her. And, uh, and she's walking along silently. Well, I don't want her to be silent. So how do I make Kim Kardashian speak in a comic strip? Voice bubbles, exactly, well done. Yes, so let's get her voice bubble in there. So she's going, hello, I'm Kim Kardashian. You probably recognise me from such things as being in the Kardashians and other achievements. If you keep remembering those things, remember to get your backgrounds in there. Don't forget your backgrounds. Remember to get your voice bubbles in there. Remember the words are part of the pictures. Remember to get the detail in there. Let's get her face in there. Let's get her eyes and her nose and her mouth and a smile. And I can't fit it all in. Why can't I fit it all in? What have I done wrong? Exactly. Way too small. I fall into a trap. This is a trap that a lot of people fall into when they do their first comic strip. And this is a trap that we must all avoid. I've fallen into the tiny trap. The trap of doing tiny little pictures that all look the same as each other. Let me show you how this happens. And let me show you how we can avoid it. Here, I have a fine example of a Beano comic from back in the day. This is a Beano uh, where I wrote and drew the whole main story myself. A story where everybody goes to the Queen's birthday party. There's the Queen, there's some corgis, there's my name. Kevf, hidden down there on a little piece of paper. There's my name. At the end of the story, the Queen 
gets squashed. There's my name on a little piece of paper there again. There's my name. At the end of the story, the Queen gets squashed. But there's my name on the Wendy house there. On the Wendy house, there's my name there. The, uh, the end of the story, the Queen gets squashed. It's on the roof in the tiles. Look there in the tiles on the roof. And the end of the story, the Queen gets squashed. But look, it's on the number plate there. On the number plate, there's my name there. The end of the story, the Queen gets squashed by a hot air balloon. That's what it looks like when it's printed in the V note. That is what it looks like when I drew it. Now, apart from the colour, which I do in Photoshop on the computer before we print it, apart from the colour, what is the obvious difference between the artwork and the comic? Apart from the colour, which we do on Photoshop on the computer before we print it, well spotted, the voice bubbles are also added at the same time as the colour, well done, but apart from the voice bubbles and the colour, that's it, it's bigger. We draw it twice as big and we shrink it down into the comic. That's what happens with all the comics you'll have seen, the Beano and American Superhero comics. And in the case of manga, when you see a manga book like Naruto here, these Naruto pages are drawn even bigger than my original artwork here. Uh, this Naruto original artwork could be drawn A2 size, which makes it about eight times the size that you see it printed there. Why? Why do we draw it big and shrink it down small? We draw it big and shrink it down small so you can get in more detail, exactly. If you draw it big and shrink it down small, you get more detail into your page, which, when it's printed, makes you look like you're a better artist than you already are, and it's much easier to do. If you're trying to do tiny little pictures, they're going to be hard for you to draw, they're going to be impossible for the reader to see. Let me show you. Let me show you very quickly how much better this can be if I go back to square one, and this time, I'm going to make it big. Now I'm going to get a nice big title at the top of my page. I think you should get a title on your comic strip pages. Of course my title is just Kim Kardashian meets a worm. I'm sure you can think of better titles than that. But now I can really read Kim Kardashian's voice bubble. And I want to see that it's Kim Kardashian. So, do I need to draw from her head right down to her feet every time? No, of course not. I can zoom in on what's important, which is her big Kim Kardashian face. There she is with the eyes, and she's got the nose, she's got the mouth, and then we've got her hair. Let's have her hair tied back. She's got her hair tied back there with a great big trailer park facelift ponytail. You see, a lot of people think you've got to fit the whole body into the picture, but of course not. Look. If her body goes off the edge of the picture, we can still imagine it's there, can't we? And now I can see the background, I can see the footpath, I can still see those skyscrapers. I would love it if you could get a close-up in one of the pictures on your comic strip page today. Maybe when your character's saying something, maybe when they're reacting to something. Um, when I'm doing a comic strip page, uh, again we'll have a look at a typical one from uh, Prince of Denmark Street, if I open it just at random, you'll see I've done um, close-ups when people are uh, giving us important um, uh, expressions and then I get wider shots when I want to see more of the characters. I've got uh, extreme close-ups when someone's really got an emotion that's coming up. You see anything that's happening in the story we want to be able to see it. So if Kim Kardashian's walking towards that worm, I really want to see that worm. Look at that. Big, fat, juicy worm there, the little worm face. And Kim Kardashian is about 10 feet away in the distance walking towards us, so what would she look like? That's right, she's gonna be small because she's further away. And suddenly, there's Kim Kardashian there, small, still got a ponytail there, there's a shadow. She doesn't it look better with a little bit of depth in the picture, something big because it's close up to me, something small because it's further away. I could even exaggerate the depth by having the sides of the footpath getting bigger as they come towards me, getting smaller as they disappear towards the vanishing point on Kim Kardashian's belly button. Using the magical drawing technique called, what's it called? Everything gets smaller as it disappears towards the vanishing point in the distance. Shout it out, what's that word called? It's a word beginning with P, what's the word? Well done, that's right. Perspective. What's the word, everybody? Perspective. Don't worry if you can't draw perspective. When you can, it's fantastic fun. The important thing is that I've made every picture different from every other picture. All I have to do is think, what's going to happen? What's going to happen next? And then find the best way of showing it. Does it need to be a close-up picture? Does it need to be a wide picture? Does it need to be looking up someone's nose? 
find the best way every time. So help me now. Kim Kardashian's foot is coming down towards the worm. The worm is looking up, about to be squashed. How can I draw that? What can I put in the next picture? Yes, someone tell me. Yes, I can have the foot coming down towards the worm. That's good. What else could we do? We could have Kim Kardashian's eye view looking down her leg so her leg gets smaller as it gets further away. I like the sound of that. What else could we do? We could have worm's eye view looking up at Kim Kardashian. That's good. Face, face of the worm. Yes. What would the face of it? Show me the face. Get right up to the camera on your uh, laptop and show me the face of a terrified worm. Everyone, show me that expression. Make the sound. What would the face of a terrified worm look like? That's a scared worm. That's a terrified worm. That's what I was looking for. Yes, picture it. You, you've just thought of three or four different ways of showing the same moment of action. And if you've got more than one way of showing the same moment of action, don't cram it all into one picture. Every picture tells the story. Every exciting moment could have its own dramatic close-up. So I can have one picture, like the first one we described, where Kim Kardashian's foot is coming down towards the worm. There's the ankle, there's the shoe, there's her heel there, and there's the worm down there. I could even get the shadow of Kim Kardashian's foot going around the worm. I could still get the horizon in the background. I could still see some skyscraper. There's the worm looking a little bit uh, scared. And now, in a totally separate picture, picture the face of a terrified worm. Doesn't that look like a scared worm? No? Okay, wait a minute. How about if I make it shake and shudder? Does he look scared now? Wait a minute. How about if I get a voice bubble in there? So my worm is screaming. Does he look scared now? Okay, wait a minute. How about if I get some shock lines flying out there like that? Does he look scared now? Okay, wait a minute. How about if I get uh, some eyeballs in? Does he look scared now? Okay, wait a minute. How about if I get his mouth in there? Does he look scared now? Okay, wait a minute. How about if I get the shadow of Kim Kardashian's foot and make that go all the way around? the outside of the worm. Does he look scared now? Okay, wait a minute. How about if I take the shadow of the foot and make it go right down the centre of the worm? So there's shadow going down there. There's light on the eyeballs. There's shadow going down there. There's light on the mouth. Now, does that look like a scared worm? See, bit of, put a bit of shadow in there. You can turn it from being a comedy story into being a dramatic story, or if that's not enough. Here's one thing you can do in a comic strip, and you can't do this in a film. You can't do this in a TV show. You can make one picture on your page bigger than all the rest. If you're making a film or a TV show, all your pictures will be the same shape and the same size. But if you're making a comic strip, you can go from a picture that size to a picture that size. And then your next picture could be a big wide picture like that. Or it could go right down to the foot of the page, staying inside your border. So that in the moment before Kim Kardashian squashes the worm, I've zoomed in so far, I've made it so big, I've avoided the tiny trap by so much that I can see every ridge on his little wormy body and his big wormy eyeballs. Now does that look like a scared worm? Make your pictures as big as you need them to be. Look, I've got room for worm eyebrows here. I've got room for worm sweat coming off there. I've got room for a big worm scream going down there. I could even do an interestingly shaped spiky worm voice bubble and the worm is looking up about to be squashed by Kim Kardashian. What's the first thing the worm can see? The foot. Which bit of the foot can we see? The heel and the sole, the bottom of Kim Kardashian's foot, there's a heel, there's a sole, and look at that. It's so big, it's bursting out of the side of the frame. You couldn't do that in a film, could you? You couldn't do that in a TV show, have something so big it literally bursts out of the side of the screen. But that's what you can do in a comic strip. There's a bit of chewing gum there. And then her leg disappears up her trousers, there's her trouser leg, gets smaller, as it gets further away, using the drawing technique called perspective, well done, and then her leg bends. And if that leg gets smaller than this one, it's going to get bigger as it comes down towards me. I'm going to see up her other trouser leg there, there's a shoe, there's the horizon, and then the top of Kim Kardashian's body carries on getting smaller as it gets further away until we see her big Kim Kardashian head up there. The big limb, long hair, she's got long hair now, big long hair, big long hair going all the way down there, big long hair. Now doesn't that look better than that? 
That is what you are going to avoid. You are going to do a comic strip page with no more than six pictures filling the page. That way every picture can be good and big enough to be full of detail. We're going to avoid tiny little pictures that all look the same as each other. If you get a picture nice and big, you could get a background in there. Look, I've got room for a background with skyscrapers getting smaller as they get further away with a bit of exaggerated perspective. This one getting bigger as it comes down towards me. Even the windows of the skyscraper to be getting bigger as down towards me they come. Now, I'm not expecting your comic strips to look as good as that. That took me 15 minutes and you've only got the rest of the summer. But if you remember these simple techniques, your comic strip page can look great. Step one. I'd like you to get a centimetre border around all four sides, use a ruler, and then and I'll do this in pen, but if you do it in pencil, it would be better. Do it in pencil so you can make mistakes as you go along. Then, inside your border, if you get your title somewhere on the page, then divide the page up into no more than six boxes. They can go right up to and include that border. Nice big boxes. You could have round boxes. You could have heart-shaped boxes. You could do big wide boxes. You could do zigzag boxes. The important thing is to make sure you get big boxes with a small gap in between them because it's what happens in the boxes that tells the story. You've got your picture telling the story and then you use your words for your voice bubbles or captions. You can use captions for anything that you can't see in the picture but don't write a great big explanation of what's in the picture because we don't need that because we're telling the story in pictures. So if you get your words in the voice bubbles or the thought bubbles and then we want to make sure we can see your people. Make them nice and big. Big people. I don't want tiny little idly piddly pictures. I want big characters nice and big. I want to be able to see those backgrounds. I want to see that detail. Do your page in pencil, go over it all in pen, it's going to be incredible. While you carry on drawing, I'm afraid my half hour is up. So I'm going to complete the drawing of our front cover, which is here somewhere. Yes, I shall complete the drawing of a fat banana threw up on Walthamso Stoke Central. And the full colour version of that will become available to you by some means. You can probably find it on my Twitter, which is at Kevf Comic Artist. Thank you for participating in this. This has been the London Borough of Waltham, so Waltham Forest Holiday Activity Programme in association with Grape Entertainers. And if you want more information, email info at grapeentertainers.co.uk. If there's any more information to come, it'll be superimposed on the screen. There's probably a Waltham Forest logo floating around for all I know. I've not really been paying attention. Thank you, oh, thank you, thank you, and have a good summer. There you go. A fat banana threw up on Walthamstow. What? I still can't say Walthamstow.